ensure accountability and should be held accountable and then most importantly is that how it interfaces uh, with not only the different stakeholders but also how it inter interfaces with the different uh, important positions within the organization and then defining the roles and responsibilities of the director now another viewpoint uh, which we have seen uh, emerging is the oecd view on board of directors so uh, oecd basically stands for the organization for economic cooperation and development this this body of uh, 30 uh, developed nations uh, basically combining together their expertise their research their knowledge their wisdom and ensuring that there is a better more transparent world not only in the private sector but also the public sector and also the social sector no so now when we look at uh, the the viewpoint of oecd then the corporate governance framework should ensure the strategic guidance of the company the effective monitoring of management by the board and the board's accountability to the company and the shareholders so basically three things now first of all strategic guidance of the company not tactical but strategic number 2 effective monitoring of management by the board and then number 3 board's accountability to the company and shareholders so the role is strategic guidance the the responsibility is effective monitoring of management and the transparency is is the board's accountability to the company and its shareholders so the oecd condense these three points together as the principles of corporate governance so these are defining principles and they are very important the board members should act on fully informed basis in good faith with due diligence and care and in the best interest of the company and the shareholders so that has been said by the other models also where board decisions may affect different stakeholder groups differently the board should treat all shareholders fairly the board should apply high ethical standards it should take into account the interest of the stakeholders so again watching the interest of the shareholders and acting fairly that could be small could be medium could be large and then also taking into account the different stakeholders and that is very important the board should fulfill certain key functions including reviewing and guiding corporate strategy major plans of action risk policy annual budgets and business plans and setting performance objectives so these are its primary functions and these are extremely important monitoring the effect effectiveness of the company's governance practices and making changes as needed selecting compensating monitoring and when necessary replacing key executives and overseeing succession planning so the oic talked about succession planning that they, it should not be hap hazard process it should actually be a structured process a a process oriented approach towards replacing senior executives or senior employees and that would ensure that there is continuity there is sustainability and there is better performance at the end of the day aligning key and board remuneration with the longer term interest of the company and its shareholders very important rather than just looking at the individual and ensuring the following functions ensuring a formal and transparent board nomination and election process as earlier mentioned monitoring and managing potential conflicts of the interest of the management the board and the shareholders including the misuse of corporate assets and abuse in related transactions so all are very important and what we see is that the board members and shareholders including the misuse of corporate assets and abuse in related uh, transactions so this becomes very very important uh, to ensure more transparency accountability integrity diligence and better performance of the organization so these were all of the points which were given by oecd and that would result in ensuring the integrity of the corporation's accounting and financial reporting systems overseeing the process of disclosure and communication so that was very important the board should be able to exercise objective independent judgment on corporate affairs the board should consider assigning enough non executive board members capable of exercising independent judgment to task where there is a potential for conflict of interest so basically what we see is is that the board acts as a conflict resolution platform and also 
they should have enough technically astute non-executive board members which they can place in different overarching roles and committees of that particular organization and that would ensure better performance at the end of the day. When the committees of the board are established, their mandate, composition and working procedures should be well defined and disclosed by the board. So again, that is a major function of the board. The board members should be able to commit themselves effectively to their responsibilities and that is extremely important. So what we see, ladies and gentlemen, is that the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development basically redefined uh, the role, uh, rights and responsibilities of the board of directors and in that they gave more structure, uh, they gave a more enabling role and most importantly what they did is, is that they ensured that they would be a multi uh, sectoral and multi segmental, uh, multi level accountability and cross accountability uh, between the main stakeholders and shareholders and also uh, would ensure that uh, all of the major positions uh, of the organization would be looking up to the board for guidance, for strategic vision and also for compliance uh, of various mandates which have been defined by law and by various committees around the world to ensure that there can be uh, good corporate governance in any organization. Thank you so much.